Coming up on Doctype, CSS3. You've heard about it, you know it's coming, but what's really the point if you can't do something cool? We'll show you how to use tech shadows like the pros. Then, have you been wanting to get into jQuery but just never had the time? We'll show you how to dive right into this candy land of JavaScript. So grab your digitizer tablet and a coffee cup full of candy, because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is made possible by Less Everything and Scrummed. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that wants to learn a little bit of JavaScript or a developer that thinks everything they make looks like crap, Doctype is here to show you the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help you take your next project to the next level. To the next level. The next, next level. You know, <laughs> I've always wondered if there's like maybe a max level for web developers. I think the max level would be a, a webmaster. It's actually really good. Uh, I like that, webmaster. No, <laughs> terrible. Anyway, <laughs> on this very first episode of Doctype, we are going to be talking about the magical candy land of JavaScript, jQuery. Ooh, jQuery. It's so sweet. It is so but sweet. But first, we're going to be talking about CSS3, right? CSS3 indeed. So you've probably heard about CSS3, the third major revision to the stylesheet recommendation from the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C for short. But what does that really mean? Well, actually, it means a whole heck of a lot. There's a lot of cool new stuff coming in CSS3, and you can even start using it right now in your favorite browsers like Safari, Firefox, Chrome. Internet Explorer? Mm, not Internet Explorer just yet. We'll, <sighs> we'll, we'll actually get to that. <laughs> Anyway, text shadow accepts four values. The X offset for the shadow, the Y offset for the shadow, the blur radius for the shadow, and of course, the color of the shadow. So let's break this down. So the X and Y offsets are usually in pixels, but they can be in any other unit of measurement in CSS, like M's or whatever you like to use. Uh, the X offset is you know where the shadow is horizontally. So the higher the X offset, the more to the right the shadow is gonna be. And if it's a negative offset, it'll be to the left. Same with the Y. If it's positive, it'll be below the text. And if it's negative, it'll be above the text. It actually works uh, pretty intuitively. Next is blur radius, and again, this can be set in pixels or M's or whatever unit of measurement you like to use in CSS. The higher the value for the blur radius, the fuzzier the shadow will become. So if you set a really high value for it, it could even look like the text is like jumping off of the page if the shadow is really fuzzy. It's kind of just like in Photoshop, it actually renders really nicely in a lot of good browsers, we'll say. I tried setting a negative value for the blur radius, but the world did not implode like I thought it was going to. Oh man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Finally, there's shadow color. This can be expressed as a basic hexadecimal value, but if you want to really take your designs to the next level, you should try using the new RGBA color setting, which is new in CSS3. RGBA works just like it sounds. You set the red, green, and blue color values, and then you have an alpha setting, which is a number between 0 and 1, which you can kind of turn up and down to adjust the opacity of your, uh, of your text shadow. So it'll allow your shadow to sort of blend in with the background. Exactly. So you can kind of fine tune it. Anyway, I hope you've been with me so far, because this is where things get really wild. Now, believe it or not, you can apply up to six shadows to a single piece of text. That's six shadows. So the way you do this is you separate each additional shadow using a comma. Now this is pretty cool because you can create effects like flames or embossed lettering or off-register printing, really whatever you want. Cool. Yeah. Now I know what you're thinking. What, what do I do with text shadow if I don't want all sorts of like, you know, cheesy effects like oh. flames and stuff? Oh, and... the cheesy effects are the best. It's, I know. What else am I going to use it for? I know. They're, <laughs> they're my favorite too. But here's an effect that I really like to use that I think you're going to love. So a current trend in web design right now is to use sunken or inset text. And this is a great opportunity to use text shadow instead of using images. 
The first thing that you want to do is you want to set the text color to be slightly darker than the background that the text is on. Second, you want to use text shadow to kind of highlight the bottom lip of the text. And the way you do this is you set the X offset to be zero, you set the Y offset to be one, you set the blur radius to be zero, so it's nice and crispy, and then you will probably want to use RGBA here. You set RGBA to be full white, and then you can dial down the opacity to make it kind of blend into the page quite nicely. Hmm. Cool, so, just like a real shadow. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool effect. I, I really like it, and you're starting to see it a lot of places, but I don't think it's so trendy yet. I think, I think it's still okay to use it. All right. Sorry, just don't use it too much. So last, but certainly not least, we come to browser support. Firefox, yes. Safari, yes. Chrome, yes. Internet Explorer, sort of. Now, if you really want to use this in Internet Explorer, you can, but it's a little bit messy. You have to use like strange filters and uh, IE filters. Yes, Always other fun. other black magic and <laughs> things like that. Now, next up is jQuery. But before we get into the candy land of JavaScript, we have to take a second to thank the people that keep the lights on. Do you want more out of life? Then what you really want is less, less everything. Less Everything are two awesome dudes that make awesome stuff like Less Accounting, the accounting app for small businesses and freelancers to save you pain and suffering. Loved by Less, the open source social network. Less time spent, track your time and avoid billing mistakes. And of course, LessComp, the coolest, chillest conference this side of the South Pole. To learn more, check them out at lesseverything.com. That Alan is so dreamy. You've probably heard about jQuery and might even be using it, but what is it good for and how can we use it to make our web pages better? We'll show you right now. In short, jQuery is just a set of tools written in JavaScript to help you manipulate your pages more easily. It worries about all the browser inconsistencies in math and just lets you write your code. So how do we get jQuery? Well, there's two main ways of doing it. First, we can go to the jQuery.com website and click download. We'll then take our jQuery.js file and put it in our web directory, probably in a folder called JS or JavaScripts. Then from inside our page, we're going to use a script tag with a source pointing to that JavaScript file. Now, once we have that, our page is all set up to use jQuery and do all the manipulations that we want. The second way of getting jQuery is using Google's help. So if you go to code.google.com slash APIs slash Ajax libs, you can see that there's this path for jQuery and they'll actually serve it for you. So you don't have to download it and host it on your own server. Now this has made two main benefits. First is you don't have to host it. So you save on hosting costs and having to even download it and put it in your server. The second is, is if a whole bunch of sites actually use the same URL to serve it from, the browser will actually remember it. So if the user goes to your site and uses the Google version and then they go to the next site, it'll actually load up a lot faster and they won't have to download it again. So it's a better experience for your users. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Loads up nice and snappy. Nice and snappy. So now that we have jQuery loaded in our page, we can start using it. The main way jQuery works is using the dollar sign function. Now the dollar sign function takes in a string that is a CSS selector of what you want to target. Now what's cool about it is jQuery supports CSS3 in all the browsers. It doesn't actually use and have all the quirks that your browsers would have as far as CSS3 selectors. So you can use classes, IDs, and pseudo elements, and a lot of other custom ones too. Now what it does is it returns you an object that represents those items that you are targeting. And with that, we start manipulating them. So when you want to manipulate things in jQuery, we call methods on them. And we call methods by putting a dot, the name of the method we want to do, and then parentheses, and optionally some arguments inside those parentheses. So let's say we wanted to hide all the image tags on our page. So we'd use the dollar sign function, pass it the string img, and then we call the method hide by doing dot hide, and then they'd all be gone. We can also pass some options to hide, such as a string like slow, and it'll actually add an animation to the hide to make them go away very slowly. Slowly, that's yeah. pretty nifty. Yeah, it is. So what's cool about most of these manipulation functions is that they actually return the same jQuery object they were called on. So it allows you to do multiple things all at once. So let's say you want to change the text of an element and then highlight it immediately after. Then you could just call the, the methods that would change the text and then immediately call .highlight 
and you could actually just keep going over and over again as many things as you want to do to that element. So let's try it out. In your page, open a script tag and we'll use the following code. Now the first line, the document.ready, says basically we don't want to execute this code until the entire page is loaded up. So inside that we see that we're using the dollar sign function with the p string, and that targets all of our paragraphs. So the first method we call is a CSS, and you can pass that any CSS attributes you want. What's cool especially is the opacity one, since opacity works differently in all the browsers, jQuery will actually figure out what browser you're using and use the correct code to change the opacity to, in this case, 70%. And then after that, we want to do the dot effect with the shake effect. And then when we load our page, all of our paragraphs will have a blue background and be slightly transparent. Additionally, all of our paragraphs will give a quick shake as the page loads. And that's it. You can find the documentation at jQuery.com to see all the methods you can use to manipulate the items on your page. In future episodes, we'll be talking about some cool, more advanced techniques like Ajax and some cool plugins that will make your pages even more dynamic. Dynamic? Man, I'm totally pumped. Anyway, now it's time for a quick word from one of our sponsors. If you're working on projects, you want to stay organized and make sure you're working on the right things. That's where Scrums can help. Scrums uses Scrum methodology to help you plan your work and make sure you keep on delivering. It's great at keeping you on task and staying out of your way. Drag and Drop Everywhere makes quick work of adding releases, sprints, user stories, and tasks. Scrum also allows you to designate your product owner, your Scrum master, and your Scrum team members, and it brings full transparency to all your projects. Check them out at scrums.com. Use the discount code DOCTYPE and you'll get an extra 30 days on your free trial. And you'll also be helping keep DOCTYPE on the air. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Doctype. Be sure to check out our Facebook fan page and follow at Doctype TV on Twitter. And this being the first episode of Doctype, we're especially interested in hearing your feedback. Email us at questions at doctype.tv with your questions, feedbacks, tips, or anything else that's on your mind. Sushi recommendations are also always welcome. Very welcome. Well, until next time, remember that every great web page starts with Doctype. <laughs>